Welcome back to chapter 3 of The Novelist. Last week, Dan invited his friend Tynan over for a mini book jam. Linda's parents made a short visit, but they didn't talk too much, and Tommy was very upset that he couldn't invite his friend over for a sleepover. Catching up. When Tommy continued to struggle, Mr. and Mrs. Kaplan, I want to stress that it's perfectly normal for some children to fall behind in this specific area. Tommy may be struggling with reading comprehension, but his verbal and visual abilities are excellent. That said, he won't catch up on his own. He will need support from both of you. I recommend that you do the attached exercises with Tommy every week morning, every weekday morning, for one to two hours. He'll be unable to focus exclusively on these for two straight hours, so you'll need to take intermittent breaks, but use your judgment and stay with it as long as you feel he can stay engaged. I suggest that you do your sessions in the morning before he tires himself out and becomes distracted. I feel confident that with a supportive environment and dedicated exercise, he will catch up to the other children in his class. Please be in touch if you have any questions. Dr. Donald Samuels My oh my, that's not a good thing. Barb, sorry it's been so long since I've written. Things have been hectic around here, and I'm trying to figure out a way to get things back on track. I don't really want to get into it, but we're getting pulled in a lot of different directions right now. Nothing hurtful, just competing priorities, I guess. Although those can get worse and worse over time. I mean, Dan and I, before we got up here, you know we'd started to drift. Look at that. I said I didn't want to get into it, and I did anyway. Enough about me. Please tell me you're doing well, and I hope this doesn't stress you out too much. I promise to write a happier letter soon. Yours always, Linda. Man, just reading all these little notes lying around about this family is stressing me out. I have to make room for what matters. The Linda is a pretty family-minded individual. I think it's reasonable to hey, say mommy. that. Oh, They're together right now, so I'm going to go bother Dan instead. So I don't spook them out. Oh, oh. Nope, no memories here. Oh. Oh, that looked a lot grimmer than I remembered seeing it. Maybe it's just because we're in this kind of darkened color setting. Oh, there we are. Tynan and Kelly left this morning. I wish they could have stayed a little longer, but it was great having them. It felt just like college again. Fishing, having a few beers, talking about how we're going to conquer the world. Working through some issues on his book even gave me an idea for how to fix the logjam in Act 2. Funny how creativity works sometimes. I've got to remember to put him in the acknowledgments. Seems like Dan is doing better with his book, which is always a great thing. Whoa. Whoa. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have snapped. I just... I just... I just... Ooh. That stress is building on. Let's see, what can we find here? That does look a little bit grimmer than I remembered. The clear handprint here. Dan and I had a good conversation today. Well, we'll have to wait and see if it was actually good, but I feel like I got my point across about family time. We've been getting a little frayed on the little things lately, and it reminded me of something Anne said one time. Love is a behavior, not an emotion. If something's important to you, you show it with your actions. We weren't doing so well with that before we got here. I told Dan my idea. I want us all to eat together at 7 every night, with family time after that. Tommy's wiped out by 8.30, so we'd get a solid hour and a half as a family, and then Dan and I could have the rest of the night to ourselves. And I think seven's a reasonable request. The rest of the working world knocks off at five, right? It doesn't really matter what we do with the time, just that we spend it together. It's easy to make excuses when you've got a lot going on, which is why patterns help. I hope he feels the same way. I completely agree with what Linda thinks here. It's great. It's important to make time for what's actually important. You know, that's something that I personally struggle with as well. Sometimes I get really wrapped up in thinking about, you know, homework and school. I don't really hey, pay hun, attention. What you doing? 
Racing. to my family as much as I should be. And that's obviously not a great thing. Let's go bother Linda now. How's my man? I'm good. We barely talked yesterday. Wow, you're right. I guess we've just been so busy. Hmm, that's not good. Where's the last one? I'm sure mom and dad would have liked to have been the only visitors in the house, but they understood the bad timing and were glad to see us at all. With so much going on, I didn't get a chance to talk to her about things with dad. I need to try and call or write when they get back home. I hope they're okay. Hmm. Hey, dad. Family hey, should have dinner around the table every night. So we've got Linda. I think we need to look at Dan's thoughts as well. Hey, did we not? No, we gotta look for more clues for Dan. Let's go to his office. There we go. Perfect schedule, aka the single unattached writer's guide. <laughs> 10 to 2, right? 2 to 3, eat and step away. 3 to 7, right? 7 to 8, eat. 8 to 10, decompress. Edit and life. Wrenches. Tommy till 11, knock off at 7. See, it seems like. Seems like Dan has a similar idea about family time as well, and in his little schedule here, he wants to eat dinner at 7 too, so... Alan, this letter might come from out of the blue, but do you remember when you told me about Bobby falling behind on reading? Looks like we're there with Tommy. We knew he was struggling when we came up here, but his teacher gave us a list of books for him to work on over the break, and said we should see how he responded to the change in the environment. She gave us a few sample readings and told us to keep an eye on how he was grasping the concepts. Tommy still isn't there, and long story short, the pediatrician in town knows a specialist who gave us some exercises to try. They seem pretty straightforward, but I wanted to write and see if you had any tips that helped you guys with Bobby. Damn. Just realized I didn't even ask how you've been. I'm sorry. This stuff is just a lot to think about. Dan. Oh, hey, God. Tommy. Constant conflicting priorities. The name of the game. Let's see. New rule, don't disturb me if the door to my office is closed. There's little Tommy. Hello Tommy. Oh, gotta get behind Tommy. Will it make me smarter? Honey, listen to me. You are smart. Mm, I'm guessing that's talking about the reading exercises that the, the teacher wants them to do with Tommy. You know, it's always heartbreaking to see a kid not have self-confidence because of bullying. That's That breaks my heart. Oh no. Seems like Tommy looks a little depressed in that little drawing there. It's not a good thing. Whoops. Step away. Daddy says the candy store is our secret. Oh no. Hmm, where's a clue for Tommy? We need more clues for Tommy. Oh, there's another drawing there. Oh no, what is this? Oh, maybe he doesn't like reading? It seems like he scratched out a book. Oops, that's not what I meant to do again. Man said to do the Lonnie book every morning. Alright, so now we get to choose. <sighs> First week, we spent a lot of time with Tommy and with a little bit of time for Linda. Second week, mostly for Dan and then for Linda. Usually, if, if we're trying to even out all the compromising, I would choose Linda first and then Tommy second. But I do feel like that Tommy needs some guidance right now and a kid, whether a kid is able to read or not, I think it's a little bit more important than the state of me and my wife's relationship, as cruel it is to say that. But, you know, one is concerned with the developmental abilities of someone, and the other is, you know, a relationship. Time. Time, time, time. 
This would all be easier if I didn't ever have to sleep. Last night after Linda went to bed, I spent some time, there's that word again, trying to make everything fit. I even drew up a little chart. The math is simple, it doesn't work. Technically, I can still get in eight hours, assuming I don't eat or need to do anything that's not writing. But what about letters, reading, dealing with Paul? Hell, what about doing the dishes or taking out the trash? Not to mention that knocking off for the day isn't like flipping off a switch. It takes time to crawl out of my head and start functioning like a normal person again. And I can't just split it up into smaller chunks. Sometimes it takes an hour of false starts just to get going on anything usable. And stopping just sends the whole process right back to square one. Something's got to give. Ah, uh, I'm leaning towards... Letting Dan give up on this week again on writing, but hey, bud, this is really hard. Family, family, I think should always come before a job. If they're rich enough to be able to afford the rent on this kind of place, they're not struggling with money. They might be struggling if Dan loses his job. Seems like they're both in the creative field, so I'm guessing not very stable pay. But, I mean, family, family, in relationships, people need to pay more attention to them rather than their jobs, I think. So I think this week, we're going to... Hmm. We're gonna focus on Tommy again, with a side focus on... Linda. Let's try that. So Tommy needs the Lonnie book. Where did I see that book earlier? Was it here? Oh, crap. I'm not sure what that Lottie book is. Um, is it? Is it it right here? No, that's Racing Roger. Let's see, is it in his room? Where is the Lonnie book? Dang. Oh, it's right here. So we're gonna choose this then. <sighs> we have all available compromises because we didn't scare anyone, which is a great thing. January 22nd. A final entry before I depart. The bank would no doubt prevent me from purchasing the house due to the inherent conflict of interest. But given its history of frequent ownership changes, I feel confident the mortgage department will be glad to have the property off their hands. I believe I can set up a trust or perhaps a shell company and convince Mr. Lowry that we must part with the property for less than market value. I feel certain I can appeal to his conservative nature. I believe it will prove to be a shrewd investment as rental property, and I think I now understand why people do not stay for extended periods. I find myself unable to describe the feeling precisely, but in my time here, I have found my mind drifting in strange ways, as if it was not always my own. But the natural beauty is undeniable. Perhaps shorter visits are wiser use of the property. Yes, I believe that is a fine idea indeed. Yeah, this guy, this guy might still own the house right now. So... I'm gonna look around a little bit. Maybe there's more notes? Yeah, we're gonna compromise with Linda, so she's looking for the table. Table, that's actually right down here, isn't it? This table? Yes. Alright. Gonna compromise with Linda this week. Next week, Dan. I'm sorry, man. Next week, I'll let you write. The Diary of Claire Bradford. That's someone new. September 4th. New, uh, what do you call that? A renter? Not a renter, you know what I mean? The person who rents a place. We're here. So why don't I feel more excited? This was supposed to be more fun. Just Roger and me. Mom and Dad think we're here with Ben and Lori. But of course, that was just a trick. 
Nope, just Roger and me in this big house by the ocean for the whole week. I'm sad to see that there's no piano here, but I suppose a week without practice won't do me too much harm. I guess maybe being alone with Roger that long is what's making me nervous. Though why should that be? He's my fiancé after all. If I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life with him, I shouldn't be worried about spending the week with him, should I? Everyone has second thoughts before they get married, right? Another person, previous inhabitant of this place. Alright, let's finish this off. Dan didn't want Tommy to start another school year behind, so he committed to helping the little man for two hours every morning. Having both his parents there helped Tommy's confidence as much as his reading, and their morning practices became an event they all looked forward to. Dan couldn't find the time to knock off completely at 7 every night, but he agreed to have dinner at the table at each night before heading back to work. Linda and Tommy missed him after dinner with the sound of his typewriter, the only sign he was even in the house, but they were glad for the time they did get at the table. Dan couldn't figure out a way to please everyone and still make room for the time and focus he needed to write. He was able to compromise and fit in one unbroken session every day, but for the rest of the day he worked around his family commitments and tried to make the most of the shorter sessions. The lack of focus came through in his work. Uh oh. And that's how the Kaplan's first month at the house on the cliff came to an end. Dan sent what he had so far to Paul. It went badly. Dan knew the work wasn't very good, and Paul echoed that judgment. He promised to keep the news from Grovefield for now, but told Dan that without a major improvement in quality, the book might not be publishable. A few nights later, Dan and Linda got a babysitter and went out for a date, but they both felt like they were going through the motions and could barely carry a conversation. They knew their first month at the house hadn't gone well, that their trip was not saving their marriage as they hoped. What could have been a pleasant night out was awkward and troubling instead. The next day, Dan made good on a promise to take Tommy into the woods and look for arrowheads. Dan had researched local tribes and he regaled Tommy with stories of Native American history while they got dirty looking for arrowheads at the site of a Swiss law settlement. They stayed until sundown, laughing, digging, and talking. The arrowheads Tommy had found became his prized possessions. They still had two more months on the coast and their story was just beginning. <laughs> 